There is converging evidence that omega-3 fatty acids are at the very least anti-catabolic and likely anabolic as well. They do this by shifting the balance more towards muscle building, particularly in context of anabolic resistance. Animal studies show omega-3 fatty acids augment muscle development. Steers fed omega-3 showed improved amino acid efficiency and activated pathways involved in muscle growth. Similarly, pigs given a high omega-3 diet exhibited larger muscles and markers of improved amino acid absorption and use. But more importantly, we have human evidence. In one study, young women taking 5 grams of omega-3s cut their muscle loss almost in half and increased muscle protein synthesis after two weeks of leg immobilization. In another study, older adults consuming 4 grams of omega-3 daily for two months had an increase in muscle protein synthesis in the presence of amino acids and insulin. Interestingly, yet another study found that healthy older adults taking omega-3 daily for half a year increased various measures of muscle size and strength. In yet another study, older adults who consumed 4 grams of krill oil daily for 6 months improved knee strength, grip strength, thigh muscle thickness, and measures of muscle nerve response. There are still open questions. For example, a consistent theme is that many of the studies are high dose at 4 to 5 grams per day. Does that imply that these effects in muscle only happen at high doses? Another question we might ask is in what context are omega-3s more anabolic? For example, in old age, during immobilization, or when protein intake is suboptimal for muscle building, which is often for many of us. Listen to recent podcast guest Dr. Chris McLaurie explain further. You know, the, the series of papers by Bettina, Bettina Mittendorfer's group, I think were the landmark papers in, in this field where... You know, they were the ones that did the, the the showing there's an enhanced protein synthetic response to amino acid infusion with omega threes, and they replicated that in in younger people and older people. If you look at the difference that the omega threes had on the protein synthetic response, you're thinking there's no way. Like that is that is huge. And then they followed it up with a another study in younger people that kind of led a lot of credence to it. And then they followed up with a, a longitudinal feed, and I think it was six months of two grams per day of EPA and DHA. And the changes there were, were quite significant. I believe it was in, I believe it was mass. I'm not too sure strength. And at that point, you're like, wow, okay, well, now I need to see, uh, that's one lab. It's a really strong lab, very well respected, high quality work. Well, Stuart Gray then published the paper with krill oil, similar uh, uh, participant cohort similar duration and replicated what had been shown by Bettina Mittendorfer's group. So then you're thinking, okay, there's something really going on here. Um, and then, you know, we've seen the protection against issues atrophy in, in young women. So there's now this growing uh, body of evidence that suggests that omega-3s are anabolic and they seem to be anabolic, particularly in, in older adults, not just from a protein synthetic point of view, but also from the perspective of an a, a, a kind of mitigating the, the declines in, in muscle mass and, and size. You can learn more about Dr. McLaurie's work and the effects of omega-3 on skeletal muscle by listening to episode 81 of the Found My Fitness podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Get the comprehensive show notes or transcript at foundmyfitness.com forward slash episodes forward slash Chris McLaurie.